When most people are programming, they're doing so from a desktop computer or a laptop. But have you guys ever thought, wow, it'd be pretty cool if I could code from my mobile devices? You know, things like your smartphone or your tablet. Coding on a mobile device may sound pretty stupid, but actually it's pretty cool and convenient for a lot of scenarios. For example, if you're working on a high pressure project and you go out for lunch and there's a fix that needs to be made and your boss is contacting you, maybe you could just pull out your phone and make that quick fix. But it also could be pretty nice for calm scenarios, like if you're traveling in a car or a bus or a plane and you just want to have some easy device that you can code off of. Whatever your reason is, there's a lot of technologies nowadays where we can code on our mobile devices pretty seamlessly. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys multiple different ways that we can code from our mobile devices. There's a lot of different use cases for each of these ways. Some of them are free, some of them cost money, but there's some pretty cool setups we can get going with our mobile devices. And it's just cool to know that we can code from our mobile devices if we want to try it out. And then later in the video, I'll do a demonstration of me making changes to a live website in real time from my iPhone. And of course, I'll be deploying it to the best hosting platform around, which is Hostinger. If you guys aren't familiar with Hostinger, it's a platform for web hosting and I think it has the most intuitive user interface around. I've been coding for 10 years, I've used a bunch of different hosting platforms, but Hostinger is by far the easiest for me. The premium hosting plan offers a ton of the benefits that other hosting platforms offer, but it's at an affordable price. There's always tons of deals going on. Right now, when I go to the platform, it's $2.99 a month plus three months free, and you get a free domain and free email associated with that domain. Plus, you get up to 100 websites, 100 gigabytes of SSD storage, and a whole bunch of other stuff. It's totally worth the value, in my opinion, and if you want a hassle-free experience and a nice user interface when you're setting up your web hosting and trying to deploy a website, Hostinger is the way to go. Click my link, and then when you're at checkout, use my code Nick White, and you will get an additional 10% off your order. So we'll do some changes to a live website later in the video, and I'll show you how easy it is to deploy. But right now, let's talk about setting up our mobile coding environment. There's a bunch of different ways, and I'm going to go through them all right now. All right, so right off the bat, on your mobile phone or tablet, the first thing you think of when you think of mobile coding environment, you would just go to the App Store and type in Coding IDE. Of course, you could download any of these and actually write code in them and probably save files to your phone and then maybe send them to your computer or send them through Google Drive to your computer later on. But that's pretty basic. And and if we want our favorite editor Visual Studio Code on our mobile devices, we can't do that. There's no app in the app store. So that's way number one to set up mobile coding, right? It's pretty obvious. Go download a free IDE. You can mess around. That's good if you just want to mess around and code random things on your phone and maybe send files to your computer. If you're bored coding on your phone, you know, just get an app. Now let's talk about way number two, which is a little bit more complicated of a setup, but it's a full control remote access to your computer. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to use an easy to use open source script from GitHub to run Visual Studio Code on our IP address. And then we can just remote access it from our mobile devices. We can code in Visual Studio Code from our mobile devices, and we can even access the files on our computer and change them. So let me show you how this works. Basically, you're going to go to Google and you're going to type in code server and there's going to be this GitHub repo code server and the instructions are pretty basic. It's basically one line of code. Go to the get starting section. It says to install, run this command. So just copy and paste that into your terminal. So here we are. We'll just copy and paste. Boom, install. You just wait for that. It's going to take a minute. And once the script's been installed, it'll give you instructions right at the end. It says it's been installed, run with code server. Just a command, you run that, and then you got Visual Studio Code running. So when you run that code server command initially, it's gonna put VS Code running on localhost 8080, and you can actually access and edit files on your computer through localhost 8080. So we're almost done here, but of course, if I try to access localhost 8080 on my mobile devices, I'm not gonna be able to reach the site. It's only running on my local machine. So now all you have to do from here to access Visual Studio Code remotely in the files on your computer, this remote setup, is just go to this configuration file and change localhost to your IP address. This is where you can find that configuration file. It's going to be .config slash code server slash config.yaml. Go edit that file and then there's going to be that bind address. So you're just going to want to change this localhost section to your IP address. Now obviously for security reasons, I will not be sharing my IP address with you guys today. But once I update that configuration file and rerun my code server, now I can access this Visual Studio Code, this remote coding setup, edit the files on my computer, from my mobile devices. All I have to do now is use my mobile device and go to my IP address, port 8080. This is running on my sh machine and now I can access it here. And it gives me that welcome screen and I just enter my password. And once I log in, that's it guys. I have access now to my remote coding setup. 
This is running on my computer, but I'm accessing it on my phone. I can edit files on my computer. I can make files. I could save them. And I have my coding eye of choice, Visual Studio Code. You could obviously change things. You could download extensions. You could do whatever you want. Everything's good to go. This is a great setup for free. So that's a pretty cool setup, right? Like you can code on your mobile devices on the go and you have a remote access to your computer basically. If you don't like how convoluted that setup is and it seems kind of annoying to do and deal with, there is another more efficient way now, but we just have to pay. It's called GitHub Code Spaces. And if you go to the main page, it will say spin up a fully configured dev environment in the cloud that starts in seconds with up to 60 hours a month free. Now, unless you're exclusively coding on mobile, which most people definitely aren't, because that sounds kind of crazy, 60 hours a month for free, that's pretty good. And if you go down to plans and pricings, it's actually pretty reasonable. It's not too expensive when you look at it. So, I mean, for a majority of things, everything's on GitHub now. This is a lot easier for me. You just sign up with Code Spaces, hooks up to your GitHub account, you click a repository, you make a new Code Space, and then you're good to go. So, let's say I want to edit my personal site. I go down here, I go to a master branch region you could select more cores i don't need to for a personal website i create a code space and boom there we go we've got the same exact setup i could code for my phone whatever project you're using this is going to be pretty good it's got a link up here in the url spot for the code space so now i just go on either of my mobile devices and i access that url now, if you're not interested in a configured dev environment on the web or a remote coding setup mobily, another easy way to code, especially if you use GitHub, is the GitHub app. When you go to it, you got your homepage, you got your notifications. When people tag you, you got an explorer, you got your profile, you got everything you need. You get access to your repositories. You can look at pull requests, all that stuff. And editing a site is super easy. You could just scroll down, find your repository you want to edit or make a commit to. So you find a project you want to use, you click it, you got your issues, pull requests, actions. I'm on my master branch. I could change to my dev branch. I could go into my commits. I can access my code. I can make edits to my code go into the components let's go into here we're console.logging we can go up to the top right hit edit file hello world close that out we'll make a commit update index.js sure boom i made a commit so this app's pretty incredible i don't know if a lot of you guys know that you can do this and like how easy it is to code on your phone or your ipad using this app but if you're working on github and you're doing small commits especially if you're just hanging out i think this is pretty good to know now one of the last ways that's pretty important to know how to code is if you're working with web applications that are deployed to cloud services like aws or google cloud platform or if you deployed your website to hosting or for example you should be able to access these different platforms through a portal and make changes this is good for high pressure things where it's like oh something's broken we need to fix this asap you know log into aws fix it log into google cloud fix it or if i want to log into hostinger and make an extremely important change to my website in real time i'm going to show you how i do that right now now i don't know about aws and google cloud but hostinger is really easy to use like i said so we go to google type in hostinger all you got to do is log in i'm already logged in so it takes me to my h panel and it says protect your account with two factor but i I'm too lazy and stupid to do that. So let's just scroll down. We've got all our stuff here, hosting, domain, email. Let's go to one of my websites. We have nickwhiteyoutube.com. We have the file manager right here. And now I can make a real time change to a live website. Let's go into our public HTML. Let's go into our index HTML. And let me just pull up this website so you guys can see this change in real time. So right here I have nickwhiteyoutube.com. This would be my portfolio. It says Nick White's portfolio, but this website kind of sucks. It just looks like a bootstrap template. So I'm going to actually edit this H1 tag, Nick White's portfolio on my phone. And let's make it say Nick White's website sucks and needs to be revamped big time. Save at the top right. And that's it. The changes go live. Look how easy it was to code on my phone, especially using Hostinger because the user interface is easy. Nick White's website sucks and needs to be revamped in real time. We could check. This is a real website, live, nickwhiteyoutube.com. That's it. I'm coding from my phone and it's easy like that. So if I needed to change that, like if someone called me like, hey, the website, we need to change this quick. Our client's going to go look at your portfolio. We need to tell them that your website sucks and needs to be revamped big time. You know, obviously that would never happen, but in a dire circumstance where you need to make instant changes, it's that easy mobily, especially using Hostinger. And I think 
that just proves how great the user interface for Hostinger is. So if you guys want to host a website there, which I highly recommend you do, definitely go to the link in the description and check them out. And then to round this video out, let's just give a shout out to tablets real quick. One thing I'd like to say about tablets where you can do all of the stuff I just did on my phone on your tablet. Another thing you could do with tablets is you can usually hook them up to your mobile computers as another monitor or a separate monitor. In my case, I'm using a Mac Mini, which has no monitor, so it's pretty cool. You can actually connect this to the Mac Mini via Bluetooth or a cord, and I can use this as a monitor. I can use it with my keyboard, I can use it with a trackpad, and I can actually do like real coding like in monitor style when I mount this with its stand, and it's really convenient because I travel a decent amount, and when I'm on the go, I can just have my camera with me, use this as a monitor, have my Mac mini, which I have a case for, pretty cool stuff. So, so you could definitely look into using a tablet's operating system itself, but if you want, maybe your tablet can just hook up to something and be used as a monitor for coding too. Either way, it's definitely good for us to know about mobile coding, whether it's because we need to make quick fixes or we travel a lot or we're lazy and we wanna hang out and write code, or maybe at your job you have a lot of boring meetings and you actually wanna be getting work done instead of the meetings, you could just secretly be coding on your phone under the desk, or if you're in school and you wanna ignore things and code, you know, whatever you guys want to do, I'm not saying be stupid with it, but you know, whatever you want to do. Hopefully you learned something from this video. I'm always looking for great mobile coding setups because I have to do that stuff a lot. So if you guys know any I didn't cover in this video, drop comments below. I'll definitely check them out. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. If you're new here, please subscribe. And yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.